How have you been affected by this lockdown in Sydney? Pretty much overnight, 70% of my work has disappeared and uh, finding ways to make my work done at home, uh, which is in this little space here, which I do a lot of the editing. But again, as a theatre practitioner, I need to work with other people in spaces to feel, you know, moved and, and motivated to find new new sort of ways of um, depicting my work. And especially when my work is going to be uh, showcased in October, and I'm hoping that that's going to happen. Yeah, tell me a little bit about the work that you were involved in ahead of this lockdown and what's likely to take place in October. So basically I'm working on a theatre solo called Action Style with PYT Fairfield and we were about to do some rehearsals and when the lockdown came we were like, okay, well we can't, obviously it's non-essential so we can't do this. We're just waiting week by week, it's just been cancelled um, and I'm just still waiting and finding ways to make this work online which is going to be quite difficult. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that because it looks like you've got a pretty cool setup going on there. Um, how have you been able to switch things up and potentially generate some kind of work or some kind of revenue online? I'm guessing it's not easy. No, like I've been looking at sort of teaching online, looking at finding ways of the stuff that I do can cross over to different countries as well. But it's not easy because this is a space that my dad built for me when I was younger. And now it's I've kind of taken over with all my film production gear. And most of my time I'll be editing and, and working in that space. But again, it's that human connection that I'm really missing. Yeah, you mentioned your dad there. Um, he's starred in a couple of the videos that you've produced over the course of the pandemic. Yes, because during the pandemic, we... Um, because he has a language barrier, a lot of the information that he's trying to decipher, um, he wasn't able to understand it. So what we decided to do was make videos in front of the green screen of him hand washing and him talking about um, dancing with like, you know, social distancing. And that was sort of sent out to the Vietnamese community. And that kind of went a little viral. And but at the same time, gave people hope that they could find different ways, creative ways to sort of navigate through this time. And it's made a difference, hasn't it, just for the Vietnamese community to see one of their own members giving that message? Yeah, I think so. I think it should have been something that, that was done earlier. You know, I think it's important to find ways to get people from the community, artists, to even decipher what is going on and, and sort of like maybe make some more empowering messaging for the community so that at least they don't have to wake up in the morning and go and, and live in fear. And a lot of us are now living in anxiety and there's a lot of mental health issues that are coming out, um, having these lockdowns sort of popped up and not sure where we're going to be heading. And Fairfield is one of the three LGAs that has been named by the state government as areas of concern. You're living under even tougher restrictions in those areas. What's that been like? And is there a sense amongst the community that it's being unfairly targeted? Oh, 100%. Like, I think I'm always online looking at some of the community forums and seeing what's happening. Like, there's so much confusion about who can come in, who can come out. And at the same time, we're like, why is it now we've been targeted? Like, if we're living in Fairfield. We're the ones that, like, as if, you know, we're not helping the cause. Like, we're, we're not finding ways to stop it. But at the same time, there's no empathy in terms of understanding how different the space is because we have a huge cultural population, not only that, like a lot of them are working in, you know, the healthcare sector and also all the other industries. And, and I think we are sort of being paced along saying, hey, this is it. You're not going to be able to leave, but not really understanding the ripple effects that has in terms of the economy. Yeah. And what are you hearing from community members about how tough it is now that they're, a lot of them, not allowed to leave their homes for work in terms of how they are able to get by and put food on the table for their families? Well, at the moment, what I'm seeing is it is tough and there is now groups, um, not only online, but also via phone, they're calling each other, keeping each other in tabs, making sure everyone's okay. But like in, in the sense of people aren't really able to really respond to what's happening. Um, we're just sort of like dealing with it, you know, making sure that we don't get fined, making sure we're at the right place at the right time. We've got face masks. Like the other day I was online, I found another lady who just got um, attacked. She just got attacked because she was walking a dog without a mask. You know, so th these are some of the things that are happening in the community that are sort of being articulated and raised on 
during these on online forums and we're all sort of trying to help out. And Fairfield City Council has been quite good in helping uh, and the Mayor has been quite active sort of trying to voice the community's anxiety as well.